you that I would show you uh, how to make aircraft work. But it turns out I'm really bad at explaining things. But I will do my best. So what you're looking at right here is called Unlimited Skies. That's number one. What about that? I know I can do that. Anyway, Unlimited Skies. So this is a uh, setup for anti-laser right now because the Scarlet Dawn is being my ass. And this thing does okay. But mostly it's actual main strength. if you're 
to keep your nose down. And if it has to work too much, it'll be less stable. You'll get a lot of uh, oscillations, which is bad. You don't want oscillations. And that's just going to cause problems. So I need to make a note to add extra weight on the front. So as, like, at, like at its default state, mine is just a little bit tail heavy, a little bit nose light. It causes it to pull up. But, uh, these are your friend. These are your most important lines. You can see that when it starts to, uh,
So finding is generally what you want to do is you want to get it to where it's just past the point where it does oscillations. So you see I got some slight oscillations there, but at 60 the oscillations are completely gone and that will cause my movements to be extremely quick. Um, you can use these for testing. Usually this is only really relevant in the beginning of the testing. Since everything's tuned out, it's easy to show you. But there's this what's called a step test, I believe. So I can't do it while this thing is acting like this. flying in a straight line now. So what you can do for your step test is get it to where it's flying in a straight line and introduce stimulus. See how that line chases down? Introduce a different stimulus. Chase it down. Perfect. Now technically this should use a little bit more. But yeah, okay. Now it's chasing it much finer. I don't know why it's overshooting so hard on the red. Or the up. But that's fine. A little bit of oscillations. You, a little bit of overshooting oscillation you want. Oscillations are what does this, by the way. Just the way we should. Like this. That's not oscillations. But these are uh, input. Uh, the oscillations help it dodge missiles. So that's good shit. Now we go down to this. This is my roll pit. So we're going to give it very small numbers. Between 5 and 5. Same idea here. Let's give it a small roll. Okay, actually it needs 10 and 10, doesn't it? 10 and 10. That jerking motion right there is because I have no, uh... That's actually really slow, what the fuck? So yeah, I just actually improved my AI a little bit. I don't know why that was so high. <laughs> but uh, yeah, use a step test to introduce stimulation. So you can track it and get it back down to your appropriate whatever it is. So that's how you get your aircraft to fly intelligently. After that, it's a good idea to set up balloon systems. So let's say, oh no, my aircraft has run out of fuel. It's still rising. Okay, now it's fine. So these these uh, CFU work on like a resource sharing system. So it's possible for it to get out of range of his friends and run out of resources. And then I can send another CFU or support drones to come in and help him out. But that doesn't do him any good if he's hit the water and his engine's underground. Which is why we have the balloon. So the balloon won't let him sink. He'll hover above the water at about 30 feet. So whenever he gets his shit, he'll start functioning again. Another thing I've done with this guy is it has a miscellaneous storage box, so it keeps a small amount of everything. And it has a repair bot, so if it does crash or gets stuck in the atmosphere, because it doesn't have any tail wings, it'll fix itself and head back out. Uh, this one's incredibly efficient compared to the one I was showing you before. It just happens to use a fuck ton of engine power because of, you know, just how it functions. So for general aircraft building tips... Oh, I actually should show you the aero AI. So, you saw me tweaking with the uh, roll a little bit. This one needs a high roll because it's a fighter jet. So if you have your AI rolling your ship and it's going too far and it's causing it to, to fall into the water because it's not generating enough left for its wings, you can lower this and it will only roll so far and then it'll use its yaw for the uh, rest of the effect. So this guy, I'm still learning, so every time I get in here I adjust something. Uh, this is how far away its angle difference needs to be before it will start turning towards it with a roll. And this is where, it, at this point, it'll start using a yaw. So at 10, it'll start yawing. At 30, it'll start rolling. That wiggle right there is because I have no uh, yaw PID. So it's using binary inputs, which is on off. And as you can see, it causes some slight issues. But again, I never adjusted this because I like the wiggle. It causes it to be harder 
to hit. Like Duster's, for example. Duster stands zero chance against the Seafood. Because they just can't fucking touch him, and then the Seafood don't have that issue. Generally fly straight and steady. You saw it wiggling around, trying not to get shot by rockets. I'm not sure if that's... I mean, I know that that's not AI programmed. I didn't do that. I didn't make it do that. But it certainly, uh, by default, it seems, has a propensity to really not like missiles and get out of the way of them. Which is why I have... These heat decoys. You put these on the tips of your wings. When a missile chases you, it'll go for them instead of your main body. And... You know, if you're maneuvering as much as I am, the chances of it hitting a single fucking block are very low, so it's likely to just completely miss you. That's why Shrikes are so hard to kill, because they're... They're, uh... They have heat decoys as well, out on the end of their wings. So this guy's programmed to want to engage higher targets first, so he's going to turn around and attack the Shrike. The Shrike can't hurt him at all, but we have issues hitting Shrikes as well. But we do, we, we do have issues killing strikes. You're a really squirmy bastard, aren't you? But it doesn't matter, he's not losing altitude, so I'm not, it doesn't hurt my feelings any. What is doing that? This is roll pit, isn't it? Maybe there was a reason it was so fucking high. This stands to reason, right? So while he's killing the strike, I'll just demonstrate a few other things. Arrow, uh, ammo, you know, keep it central, blah blah blah. This is really simple shit. Uh, don't let it shoot past its maximum range. That should be obvious as well. And in the case of this one, since it's forward facing and not too terribly agile missiles, then they don't lock on. Did I kill that guy already? Jesus. Uh, they don't lock on the best. I have a forward-facing cone, but that's mostly so that it doesn't shoot at things when it's flying away. So we have more upwards left now. <clears throat> For this aircraft, it's not so big a deal. Actually, this whole nose piece right here was an extension. I tried to put a gun on this. That's why this guy's having issues. Okay, this is a perfect example. 
see that line back there? Uh, every time I delete something, it fucking moves way far back. That's the error I was talking about. That's not normal. That shouldn't be happening. moved. A lot, actually. A uh, fuck ton, actually. <laughs> so its wings are more far forward now. The line of lift has moved forward as well, but it's not quite far enough. But that's okay. It's nosing down much less hard. It has a lot more control. It can turn sharper. It's not trying to use its yaw exclusively for its turn, and everything's just performing better. So that's just a little example of how uh, troubleshooting yeah, look, look how clean its yaw is compared to before. Because it doesn't have to fucking pull its nose up so hard. So yeah, as you can see, everything's just performing better. And I can improve on this further. By remembering where I put the fucking AI. I usually put it near the back. Here we go. So. Done issues? Windows up, rather? I found my pins again. So we're gonna read. Why are you so fucking determined to put your nose in the water? happening here. You can go further than that. What are you doing? This is the fucking part about aircraft that I don't like. They just don't behave properly sometimes. You have to fight them. You know, things are stupid at this point. I just fucking re reset them. Okay. And now it's performing properly. So, hope that helped. A little bit of a demonstration as to, you know, how you can optimize your aircraft to make the damn things fly. If I was really interested in making this day, this thing do really well, I could move the... I could put lift wings in the back and cause it to where it actually generates enough lift to keep itself completely stable. But yeah, unless you're flying it manually, there's really not a whole lot of reason. Because, as you can see, the uh, ailerons are completely... the tail fins are completely capable of keeping it even smooth. So I realized after putting together most of the video that there was actually something I'd missed, and that is, let's do this one. So this is a craft that exists exclusively for me to fly. Uh, I don't remember how to button. seat. <laughs> this is one of my original aircraft. This actually may be the first one I ever built. Uh, I learned a lot doing it, but this is generally really bad. I wouldn't recommend flying something like this. 
but it does work rather well for its purposes. So, I'm not pushing anything right now. This is more or less entirely dependent on my input. And when you're building craft manually for, or when you're building craft for manual flight, it's important that it, as a general rule, flies really evenly. Because if it doesn't, you may have issues with your input. Like, it might jerk when you're trying to line up for a shot and other such issues. Uh, low recoil uh, weapons are generally a good idea. This actually has a nose down quality as opposed to a nose up. Exclusively because that gun will kick it up. So that'll help me... Oh, is that ammo? No. So that helps me with keeping the recoil under control. So I can get most of my shots in the same general area. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this sort of thing. Let's see, you get a duster out of her. Let's see. There he is. Uh, one of the this guy, if you look, he has a lot more uh, roll ability. He has no actual uh, normal wings. He just is completely a thruster craft, really. The ailerons just are for roll, and the tail wings are just for the pitching y'all. So, which which means this is more or less a completely perfectly balanced craft. And when you when you want to manually fly, that's an important thing to have. Manually flying at flown craft can be pretty effective. <clears throat> because unlike the AI, you have situational awareness and you can line up perfect shots and just completely obliterate shit like I just did. So this aircraft performs well to the point where I'll actually use it to test my own designs. So I'll spawn in like a... Say for example... Draw these. Hmm. We'll bring in where is oh so I'll put in a CFU. Oh god. Let's see if you don't do well against this aircraft. <laughs> so yeah. A manually flown craft will always kill a uh, AI flown one, even when the AI flown craft are really good. Uh, until I started fighting the Scarlet Dawn, there was nothing that that CFU drone couldn't kill in a group of like three. So let's load in the sky.